firstly, congratulations on being selected as Labour's People's Choice for MP of the Year Awards. Um, my first question is really how do you feel um, on being recognised and being voted by the public as their choice? Well, it's an incredible honour and I'm very, very grateful to the Patrick Foundation and for everyone that voted, but also to my team because I know that what I do I can't do by myself and without my fantastic dedicated uh, group that work with me both in Westminster and in the constituency, I wouldn't be able to deliver and to do and run all the campaigns that I do both locally and nationally. Um, and what from the last year do you feel like has been your greatest highlight or the piece of work that you've worked on and has really meant a great deal to you? Well, there's so many. Um, it's, it's been a particularly busy year. So much I've been working on uh, in my role on the Health and Social Care Select Committee as a backbencher there. Uh, in particular, I, I led on a lot of our work around young people's mental health. I've also presented a 10-minute rule bill to Parliament to seek to change the government's approach to how it addresses our nation's physical and mental health. Uh, I'm really keen for them to adopt what's called a health and all policies approach and the fact that the government suggested now in its most recent prevention strategy paper that it's going to look at this is really fantastic news. I've also worked on a cross-party basis to get a change in the law which means that the breathing space scheme for uh, people that find themselves in problem debt will now be extended to people that are in mental health, inpatient and crisis care. Um, that wasn't on the table at the start and by working cross-party with MPs from all sides of the House, I was really pleased that we were able to secure that change. And you talked about MPs working cross-party. Why is it important that all MPs engage with people from all communities and especially underrepresented communities? Well, I want our democracy to represent our country. And at the moment, it's fair to say we've got some work to do to address what is a gender imbalance. You know, when I was first elected into the House back in 2010, we were just 23% women. Uh, today, we find ourselves, uh, I think it's around 31%. We're on a journey. We're certainly making progress, but I want us to see a uh, 50% uh, uh, parliament of men and women, but not just a gender balance, but also seeing people from all walks of life, from all different backgrounds, people with disabilities, people from different ethnic minority backgrounds, people of all ages. There's still some people that include some very prominent people in the media that think that you can't be a member of parliament until you're over the age of 40. And as someone who's done that now for eight years under the age of 40, I would put forward that what we don't have in experience, we make up for with energy and enthusiasm. And actually particularly on youth issues, which is really relevant to the Patchwork Foundation, you know, I still have an understanding of what it's like to only recently pay off my student loan. I was one of the few MPs paying off my student loan while in office. Um, you know, I still recall what it was like and the things that I was involved in because it was a lot more recently. Um, so I want to see a parliament that better reflects our country. Uh, and it's fair to say if someone wants to stumble across the parliament channel, they would still see something which doesn't, in my view, quite re represent the eclectic and varied mix. And that's why it's so important to get people from all minority backgrounds and disadvantaged backgrounds interested in politics, engage in politics, putting people, you know, encouraging people to put themselves forward for public office, whether that's at a very community level or a local level or national level, we can all make a difference. And that's, a, that's what I'd like to see. Well, congratulations on paying off your student debt. <laughs> what would be your advice to young people currently who are trying to get involved with politics but might be struggling, don't know how to do it? Well, there's so many different avenues. Uh, and for me, what's most important is that people get involved and expose themselves to the challenges that we all see and face in uh, the places that we live in, in the communities of which we are a part. And there's so many different things that we can do that can expose us to the challenges and can also uh, enable and see people get involved in making change. Because it's not just seeing the things that we don't like, but it's actually affecting a different, or making a difference and affecting a change. So I mean, people can do that from a really early age. We can, you don't have to um, be in the working world to get involved. Um, even at a school level, um, I know from my work as a constituency MP that nearly all of my primary and secondary schools have school councils. That was a fantastic opportunity to listen to the concerns of your fellow classmates or um, course mates. It extends also to college and to university as well. 
to get involved in a kind of representative role. And not just for the sake of it, not just for the badge or the honour of, of being in that post, but ultimately it might be to, to make a difference and make a change. And I've seen so many school councils within my constituency where young people, even at a primary school level, have reflected and put forward the views of the, their fellow schoolmates uh, and really seen changes happen. That's a, a really good place to start. Um, but beyond that, um, people's you know, the places that they call home or the places that they call community, there's so many opportunities to volunteer, to get involved and to connect and, and make a difference. Um, you've also been a passionate campaigner against anti-Semitism um, and it's required you to build a lot of resilience but also stand up to people talking against you. How do you develop that resilience and what have you learned from that experience that you could share with other young people dealing with that? Well, in our country, we have laws which very clearly state that hate crime is a crime and people will be held to account for it. And I personally have not hesitated in reporting people that have directed uh, anti-Semitic abuse in my direction. And I've seen five people convicted of that in our country. Now, it can sometimes be a long process and it's not an easy process. But the police increasingly are taking this very, very seriously and in all police forces, because I've worked with many across the country, because it depends on where people live. And equally, uh, our criminal justice system and our courts and our legal system now increasingly take this very, very seriously. And I was really heartened just the other week to hear from the Metropolitan Police um, Commissioner, Cressida Dick, say very, very clearly you know, how this is a crime and it will be treated as such. And it's not any different to different types of crime. Now, I do appreciate that it's not always easy to come forward, and not everyone can. Uh, and I count myself particularly fortunate that I have a voice as a Member of Parliament, I have that platform. I'm very lucky to have a very strong support network with family uh, and friends and a great team. I also happen to be pretty resilient, but with all the work that I've done in mental health, you know, we all have mental health, and at any moment I'm clear that you know, maybe my mental health won't be uh, and, my, and um, my well-being won't be as resilient as it is today. So I count myself fortunate that I can stand up to it. I would encourage others to do so and know that if they do come forward, it will be taken seriously. I also have every sympathy with people who, who perhaps for one reason or another feel that they can't. Um, and I know that having heard in court the victim impact statements of people who have been affected by racism and bullies um, and what detrimental impact that has had on their lives and I, and I take that very seriously. So for those people that can, it's incumbent on all of us to ensure that we, that we use the laws that we have passed in these countries and have a very, very good reason because I ultimately believe that the overwhelming majority of people in our country are open and tolerant and kind, um, but we must and do everything possible to root out racism and evil and misogyny and to hold people to account when they have a really detrimental impact on people's lives. Well, clearly you're doing something very right because not only have you been voted as MP of the award, but you've clearly got far more supporters than people who have been chatting out against you. So, congratulations. Thank you so much. Thank you very much.